We're going to look at a couple of passages today. Now let's have one finger on Luke chapter 24, verse 1. Luke chapter 24, verse 1. We're going to look at verses 1 through 6. And we're going to have another finger on Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. So we're going to look at Luke 24, 1 through 6, and Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. The title of the message is Resurrection of Jesus Christ and Hell. Resurrection of Jesus Christ and Hell. We'll start with Luke chapter 24, verse 1. The Bible says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And he came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Verse 6, he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Let's go to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham says, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you, you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sunday, Lord. Lord, thank you for showing us the true meaning of humbleness when you took the form of a man, of a servant, Lord. And Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for coming down here to this lowly, filthy earth and living a sinless life, Lord, and showing us that we're supposed to follow you in that way, Lord, living the sinless life. Father, we thank you for shedding your precious blood on the cross at Calvary. Thank you for dying and resurrecting for wicked sinners like us. We don't deserve it, Lord, but by your grace and mercy, we, we have it, Lord. We have the free gift of eternal salvation. We thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord. Fulfilling Bible prophecy, Lord, for the church age that we know that we have the blessed assurance and the hope of going to heaven, Lord. Amen. And nothing that we did on our end, nothing that we can do on our end that can earn or work our way into heaven, Lord. It's a free gift yes. given by you the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father, for the King James Bible, the preservation of your word throughout all the generations, Lord. Thank you that we have the truth. Thank you that we worship you in spirit and in truth. 
Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy that you've given unto us, that we may have another day of life. Father, we pray you give us the conviction to, to hear out what Pastor Jay has to speak today, Lord. We pray that you fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Give him the free will, the power and authority to preach unto us, Lord. Help us Christians to cease from our own way of understanding uh, to our own way of knowledge and wisdom. Apply your wisdom, apply your knowledge, apply your understanding into our life. For your words is a light in this dark world that we're living in. Father, we pray that you help us give the conviction to have the love for the lost soul Amen. at any given time, any given moment, in or out of season, it doesn't matter, Lord, to always preach your word, the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father God, we pray that you be with us today, Lord. Protect us from the dangers of this world, spiritual and physical attacks. Help us keep our keep our mind and our hearts clear from the worldly affairs, the matters that we may have in our life, Lord, to solely be attentive to the preaching, Lord, for it will benefit us in our life and our walk here on earth, Lord God. Father, we pray you bless each and every one of us here, Lord God, for any uh, issues or matters that may be going on in our life, Lord God. Please tend to, our, tend to their prayer needs Accordingly to your will, Lord God. And Father, we pray that Jesus Christ comes soon, Lord. We sure are living in wicked times right now. But even so, help us to not fear man. Help us to fear you, the Lord God, and to love you with all of our heart and all of our soul and all our might, Lord God. And to help us uh, abstain from all appearance of evil and, to and abide in your word, Lord God. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Resurrection of Jesus Christ separates us from every other religion out there. Right off the bat, the founders of every religion, besides from Jesus Christ, is dead. You know, they're all believing in dead religion. Whether it be Buddha, Brahm, whether it be Joseph Smith, whether it be Mohammed, whether it be Confucius, anybody, Amen. they're all dead and their bones are found wherever they are right now. Right. They go have a parade, they go have celebration, you know, when they celebrate the birth of their founders. However, with Jesus Christ, you know, where our faith is founded upon as a Bible-believing Christian, this resurrection proves to all that he is God himself. You only have two choices when it comes to Lord Jesus Christ. You either believe him as who he said he is, or he's the biggest liar the world has ever seen, ever. He accepted worship. He forgave sins. I mean, he is God himself, or he is the biggest liar ever. One thing that people cannot deny is that he is a historical figure. People wrote about him. So you can't say that he never existed. So he existed. So you, you have two choices today. Especially if you're not saved, don't let it go another day Amen. without trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes. And for those who saved, you have to renew your burdens for the lost. Amen. Remembering this resurrection Sunday, because Christ resurrected not for himself per se, he resurrected for you. He resurrected for me. Amen. Because he resurrected, you and I can be resurrected in the future. And we hear many people, you know, I don't got no hope, you know, no hope for me in my life. You know, I'm at a dead end. And we're not talking about unsaved people here. We're talking about saved people. You know, King James believing, you know, dispensational, premillennial people. Why? Because they're not thinking about resurrection of Jesus Christ. One day you'll have a body like Jesus Christ. I mean, praise the Lord for that. As you grow older, what happens to your body? And it gets worse. 
I mean, if you deny it, and maybe you're one of those few percent of the people in the whole world, you exercise actually as you grow older. Amen. But is that you? You know, you ask yourself. But, you know, against evolution, right? You and I, our body will turn worse and worse and worse. Yes. It's just like an apple. You put it out there on the table. Do you expect to, you know, glow as days go by? No, it will attract all the bugs, right? Yeah. And it will deteriorate, and then it becomes very, you know, wrinkly, ugly thing. Me. And then you got to throw it away. Yeah. But that's like us. Once you hit our plateau, you know, prime age of 33 and a half years, <laughs> then you're going to start going down. Yes. You know? Of course, if you trust in Christ as your Lord and Savior, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So you do have to take care of it, yes. right? Yes. You know, you have to eat right. You know, you have to exercise Amen. so that you have a healthy body to go out there and preach the word and be an example to this lost world because you are the salt and light of the world. Hallelujah. Think about it. If you and I can boast in one thing, and that one thing is resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you were to talk to any person out there, hey, what's so different about you and me? You know, you could be... Jehovah's Witness, you could be any other religions out there. You know, you could be Buddhist, and you could be, you know, in Islam or Muslim. And I could tell you confidently that my Savior is risen from the dead. Yeah. Now, what about your Savior? Yeah. You know, I could find your Savior's bone somewhere, yeah. but not my Savior. So that's the end of the argument. As we sang this morning, I serve a risen Savior. That's, right. That's it. Yes. Other people have to write their songs if they don't have it already. I serve a dead Savior. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to be in a religion where they serve a dead Savior. That's right. Why? Because if you believe in an almighty God, he can resurrect himself. Yes. Because he's almighty. Yes. Omnipotent. Yes. But if your founder is dead, that tells me that you know, it's not as good as someone who could raise himself from the dead. That's why you and I can have this confidence and we could boast and give glory to our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, right? This is the miracle on which all other miracles stand or fall. If Christ did not rise from the dead, Every other miracles that he performed is for naught, right. right? I mean, devil can help people to do some yeah. crazy things, That's miraculous right. things. Yes. Yeah. But however, not right, raising someone from the dead, no. right? Only Christ can do that. So you and I have to understand this importance of resurrection. That's point number one. As Christians... And as unbelievers as well, you have to understand the importance of the resurrection. Yes. Why? Because if you don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you can't get saved. That's right. Because you don't believe in a risen Savior. You don't believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. Simple, Simple as that. Yes. I mean, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God became a man and died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious Amen. blood. He was in the heart of the earth. For three days and three nights yes. and rose from the dead. Amen. Think about it. Amen. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, if I didn't even know anything, when I hear someone like that, that person is supernatural. Yes. That person is different from me and other human beings out there. Right. I mean, he actually predicted that he's going to die. Yes. He predicted that he's going to be, you know, in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. I mean, exactly. Can you predict when you're going to die? No. Can you predict when you're going to resurrect? I mean, as a Bible believer, yeah, you could. You know, let's not be a smart aleck, you know, showing your knowledge like that. No. You know, just to a regular person, right? No. But our Lord did. That's why he's Lord and Savior. He has all the qualities and qualification to be a Lord and Savior. Yes. Simple as that. Then if you don't trust that qualified person, God himself, Lord Jesus Christ, then what are you going to trust to go anywhere? Amen. You're going to trust your works to go to hell? Yes, you could. I mean, you're going to trust your, 
you know, charity, you're going to trust your feelings, you're going to trust speaking in tongues, all those things, you, all the devil gives you, you know, visions to go to hell, you can't, right? But you can't go to heaven with those things. There were two lawyers, you know, because everybody, everybody, every atheist, every, you know, Bible-rejecting section of the world wants to disprove the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So there were two lawyers who are hired to disprove the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hey, it's a true story. So preacher challenged both of them. I'm going to give you three months. Go to the book of, you know, the Gospels, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, right? And John. I want you to study it and disprove the resurrection of Jesus Christ that it did not happen. So three months passed by. But funny thing happened. These two lawyers stopped talking to each other. They're avoiding each other. And, you know, one day, you know, after three months has gone by, they were walking and they somehow saw each other and they started talking. And the one guy goes, hey, how come you're avoiding me? The other guy said the same thing. You're avoiding me as well. And then they admitted that after they studied the four Gospels extensively, there's no way they could disprove resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are too many evidence for resurrection of Jesus Christ. So they became Christians. The more you study, I mean, I think one of the best ways, you know, if you want to witness to anybody who reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, tell them to study the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because evidences are there. You cannot reject it. I mean, you cannot actually, how should I say, you could reject the evidence, but you cannot take it away from what has happened. So what are some of the evidence? Like, number one thing is the empty tomb. Right? Yes. He wasn't there. He was risen. Yes. It was recorded everywhere. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, even Matthew 28, 6 says, He's not here, for he is risen. Yes. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. Yes. I mean, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Luke 24, 3. When you can't find the body, then that body went somewhere, right? And if you can't find it on the ground, then, you know, he's somewhere in the air. Or you just, you know, he's gone, yes. right? And that's the evidence. And you ask anybody, you ask any person, where is the remains of Jesus Christ? <laughs> nobody can ever answer and nobody could ever find it. Why? Because he was dead, he was buried, and he rose from the dead. And you think about it, man, there is actually a person who was perfect, who lived on earth without sinning, claimed himself to be God, died, and rose from the dead. How can I not trust that person? Because you are born to trust something. You are born to worship something as a human being. That's why so many people out in the world, even if they don't have any religion that they know, they start worshiping something. Right. They worship crocodiles out in the Amazons or, you know, Niles. They go somewhere. They, I mean, obviously worship the sun, the moon, and the stars. They worship all the animals out there. You know, go to, like, places like India. Have millions and millions of gods, right? You're God. I'm God. Everybody's God over there, right? But can you save the world? From hell. Can I save the world from hell? No, I can't. You know, can those animals? No. Can the sun? No. The moon? No. Only someone who resurrected from the dead can save you from that eternal lake of fire burning in hell. So there's evidence of, you know, empty tomb. And there's witnesses, many witnesses. Today, I can tell you that Brother Luis was here next week because there are more than two witnesses. I see him, Brother Oscar see him, you know, Timothy see him, right? And any, any of you here, there's evidence because there are witnesses. There are many witnesses who saw Jesus Christ after the resurrection. That's right. Many. Even five, more than 500 at once, right? right? Yes. I mean, that's on a written record. Yes. And it is established in the law itself. When you say, I'm a law-abiding citizen in America, then how come you don't believe in the resurrection of Christ, right? I mean, it is perfectly said in the Word of God. And then not even in the Word of God only, it's written in other historical documents out there. And of course, 
you know, there's millions of people who converted to Christianity yeah. Amen. and proved him to be the living Savior. Yeah. Think about it. About a one man, tens and thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of songs written for one person. Yeah. Praise the Lord. After he passed away and rose again, thousands of years later, he's the most hated person, yeah. right? I mean, you know, when you think about it, or he's the most loved person. I could be the most controversial person right now. And maybe 100 years from now, majority of the world will not even remember me, you know? Maybe one or two, you know, maybe my descendants, right? My family. But nobody cares, right? I mean, even like the most infamous ones, they, be, they get forgotten as the time passes by. But why is it that Jesus Christ... As time passes by, more people are for him and more people are against him. Something, something is special about this person, right? If all of us who trusted Christ as our Lord and Savior, and if he did not resurrect, we're believing in vain, right? We're no better than anybody else. Might as well, why are you sitting here today? Just go somewhere, you know, it's a very nice weather today. Go to the beach, go to the mountains, if you like camping, you know, if you like hanging out, right? No, do that. Why are you here? Right. No, because you know a reason Savior. Ooh, yeah. Because evidence is just everywhere. It can't be denied. Amen. There's a reason Savior who lives inside of me and inside yeah. of you. And you want to worship that person. Amen. And then you want to listen to him, you want to obey him. Yeah. That's why you're here. That's then... You know for sure, I mean, it would be hard for you to deny the evidence of the resurrection. You could deny it, right? And then you end up in hell. But if you don't want to deny it anymore, if you're on the fence all this time, man, I heard about this Jesus Christ person. Man, but, you know, be, be logical for a change. Don't be emotional, right? A lot of people become too emotional. That's why you have to check your salvation. Because you could have been at a setting, where everybody's jumping up and down, you know, singing hallelujahs and saying the same thing over and over. And then someone says, okay, repeat after me in a prayer. And then you're like, you repeat after prayer. And then you don't even remember what you prayed about, Emotion. you know? And then afterwards, someone asks you, if you were to die right now, do you know for 100% you go to heaven? You're like, you know, I, I, mean, I don't know. I, I mean, if you committed a sin on a certain day, oh, will Lord really accept me? You start doubting your salvation. Either you never gotten saved in the first place, or you're so backslidden, you know, you don't have assurance of salvation. But we don't want that first part to happen to anybody. No, and if you know a probability, there's no reason for you to take one in a gazillion chance. You know, one and denominator being like thousands of zeros of burning in hell. Because hell is eternal. Yes. Once you're in there, you can't get out. Contrary to when people say, you know what, I'm going to enjoy my life a little bit more, you know, I'll just burn in a hotter hell, you know. Because some people, you know, we were at street preaching the other day on Friday in Irvine, and this guy heard a lot of junk. And I saw him, you know, talking to Brother Mark, you know, Brother Oscar, Daniel in that corner. It's like, oh, yeah, there's like eight layers of hell, you know, blah, blah, bunch of stuff, right? I mean, he just heard some stuff. But there is a degree of hell because God is just. And when you think about it, oh, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, enjoy more life, reject Jesus Christ, and I'll just burn in a deeper hell, you know. I mean, we're going to look at the rich man and Lazarus, you know, how he felt, what he want people to know. Because that is not a parable. That is an actual event that happened. If you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to go through the exact same Amen. feelings, exact torment, exact everything that we're going to see in Luke chapter 16. If you do not trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are the, I mean, I would say it, you're the most foolish person. It's free. I mean, literally it's free. Yes. When someone gives you a billion dollars, you wait in line a year before, right? I could live like, you know, homeless for one year to gain a billion bucks, right? <laughs> I mean, you will do it. How many of you are going to just reject it? Right. I mean, if you could have a billion dollars, if you just live out on the street, you yeah. will. But when it comes to eternal salvation, you're home in heaven for all eternity. Yeah. 
yes. with the risen Savior. Amen. Perfect body. Perfect thoughts. I mean, like even right now, devils are taking you and me yes, to sir. stray away from this message. Yes. I think about what's going to be on TV, the dinner, you know, what's the activity. You know, all those things are coming through our head, right? Devil's tempting you. We don't have to worry about that. Can you believe it? You know, when we have a body like Jesus Christ, you know, Superman is nothing, right? That's right? Man, we'll have the real super body, yeah. you know, go through things, right? And, you know, when it's cold, I don't want to be cold. When it's hot, I don't want to be hot. That's right. I don't want to be sick, you know. No I don't want cold symptoms. I don't want flu symptoms. I don't want any symptoms, period. But with that resurrected body, because Lord resurrected, we're going to have the same body one day. Yes. Now, isn't, shouldn't that be some joy in your life? If you have no joy in your life, you know, after you've gotten saved, obviously something's wrong with you. Right. But at least look at the resurrection of Christ and see that, you know what? However terrible my life is today, it's going to be tomorrow. One day, I'm going to have that resurrected body. I'm going to be like the Lord. I mean, that's the greatest blessing that you could have. Thank you, Lord. That's why when you hear a bunch of stupid theories, I say, you know, people who deny Christ, there's going to be like fraud theories, you know, just for your information, right? So they said that the whole story was a hoax. But the his story and the scripture deny it. It's not a hoax, right? It's not a fraud. There is a swoon theory where it says, Jesus Christ only fainted. Man, whoa. <laughs> when someone gets crucified, and they shed all of their blood, and, and, and the Roman soldiers who's gone through all those executions, they know who's dead and who's not. Right. They know who's not dead, they'll break their legs. Yeah. They already saw Jesus Christ that he was dead. I mean, they put a spear you know, through his side. I mean, go through it. And then, and then with that state, he was just fainting and stay in the tomb for three days and then just comes out. Yeah, let's see them try it. I mean, that's not, right? And they say it's a hallucination theory. Come on. I mean, maybe a lot of people nowadays are hallucinating, right? Yeah. But not with this one. Yeah. I mean, they say that, oh, yeah, disciples and, the, you know, the woman... Like, Mary never saw the resurrected body, right? I mean, there were those who actually touched him, right? I mean, doubting Thomas, right? I mean, they touched him. I mean, disciples had fellowship with him, right? I don't know about you. What I'm seeing you is real today. Yes. You know? I mean, I don't think I'm hallucinating. You know? Well, everybody's real. It's like same thing. They saw Jesus Christ. And someone might even say, Ghost theory. They only saw a ghost. You know? I mean, but ghost not, the ghost that I know does not have flesh and bones. Right. And they don't eat or drink. No. Right? But Jesus Christ did. And there's a myth theory. Oh, it was just a wild history handed down, you know, just like Greek myth and stuff. But however, scripture shows it. And the history tells you. That's why. There's no theory in the world can deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And again, just to give you and me smile a little bit more, let's talk about a little bit of the resurrected body. You know, it had flesh and bones. It was a glorious body, right? And it was the immortal body. Never dies. You know, I don't know about any of you guys. And as a saved person, you know, I'm not afraid to die, but it's not something I look forward to, per se, on an everyday basis, right? Hey, man, I can't wait to die today. I don't go out there, hey, I want to die today, you know? I mean, of course, if you have suicidal thoughts, yeah? But in the right mind, you know, you don't go out there, hey, Lord, you know, kill me today. No. I mean, think about the martyrs. I mean, think about these Christians who's holding their faith in so many of the, you know, countries where they outlaw Christianity, Communist countries, right? I mean, you ask them, their understanding of death is different from us, right? So, but they'll tell you that same thing, man. I don't want painful death. 
right? I don't want my body to be bulldozed over from toe to head, like what North Koreans do, right? I don't want to be burned at the stake, right? I don't want my limbs to be torn apart by the horses. You know, I, don't, I mean, I don't want my tongue to be ripped out because I stand for truth in Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, that's not something I want to look forward to. But with the resurrected body, we have immortal body, perfect body, spiritual body, right? We have body that we could go through the solid walls according to the word of God, right? <laughs> you could try, right? Try to go through that wall. You know, you have a big headache, right? You might even bleed, right? I recommend you not do it, right? And then don't, there's always someone out there out of 100. You know what? The pastor said to run through the walls, you know? No, don't do it, right? You know, you got to be wise about it. So you have this, you're going to have this resurrected body that's like the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that should give you some smile and joy. Yes, sir. And especially you get older and older, you know. You don't have to worry about sickness. You don't have to worry about illness. You don't have to worry about disease, right? Thank you don't have to worry about anything, what to eat, you know. I mean, is, this, is food going to make me, you know, gain weight, right? Is it going to make me, you know, all these things? You don't have to. You have perfect body, yeah? And when you know a Savior like that who raised himself, right, who proved that he is God, the fact that he accomplishes salvation for us by raising from the dead, who gives the righteous people, righteous means to trust Christ as their Lord and Savior, eternal life, and who's going to come back, you know, take us up there, you know, unless he tarries. How can you reject this Savior? How can you deny this Savior? How can you not trust him as your Lord and Savior? You have to be the biggest, biggest, you know, fact rejecter ever to do that. Right. I mean, if you are on the fence, anybody who's here and who's listening, and if you don't know where you're going tonight, if you don't know where you're going, and you don't really remember when the time when, I, when you know that, when you knew that you were a sinner on your way to hell, Believe that Jesus is God who died for you. Believe that his blood can wash away your sins. You know, turning from your way and trusting him as your Lord and Savior and receiving him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. If you don't remember that, then today is the day of salvation. Amen. You have to accept Christ today. Yeah. Why? Let's go to Luke chapter 16. Let's go to Luke chapter 16. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrected Savior, this is what's going to happen to you. People say, what is going to happen to me? People, number one question, people want to know the answers to. What's going to happen in the future? Because if you know the future, you could control your destiny, as they say. You could control many of your actions, right? Then let's look at Luke chapter 16. When we see this rich man who's burning in hell, let's see what he's going through. Let's look at verse 23. And in hell, he lift up his eyes. So you can see that you're going to have senses. All your senses in hell. Your soul, real you, will burn in hell for eternity. And you're going to feel everything. Why? Being in torments. That's what you're going to feel in hell. You're going to go through all kinds of torments. You're going to go through everlasting burning. Inside out. Uh, can you imagine? I don't know if you've ever been burned before. If you've been burned for even a few seconds, right. it hurts and it lasts. That, those scars stay with you. When I've heard some stories when hospitals deal with burn victims, especially people who are burned, you know, many places of their body, they said the the thing that they can't forget is the screams of those burn victims. When they're being treated because they're so painful, they can't stop screaming. And it gives those chills to you. That's how painful they go through. Because I know, I mean, I'm really weak against pain tolerance, you know. I mean, I will scream if it hurts a lot. Yes. But this is beyond those screams. 
when you get burned, it's like your, your skin, you could still feel it almost like burning continuously. It's still hot. Yes. But think about that's happening to you from head to toe, inside out, for all eternity. And this torment is not about just physical torment. Think about the mental torment you're going to go through. Yeah. Think about the mentality. Oh. I mean, if those burn victims in current, you know, this, this right now, at least they could look forward to death, right? Yes. It's as sad as it sounds. At least they won't have to feel that pain. But in hell, you're going to feel it forever. Amen. Man, this is, I mean, this rich man, oh man, this is your I've been burning for 2,000 years. Oh, man. I'm going to burn another 2,000, yes. another 10,000, another 100,000, another million, another billion, another you know, quintillion, another forever. Yes. What do you think your mind's going to go through? Yeah. I mean, some people, if you break your leg and you can use it, I mean, you go crazy. You break your arm, right? You sprain your hand. You sprain your ankle. Man, and life is over. Yeah. Uh -huh. You have some stomach issues. Your life is over, right? right? But in this case, you're going to go through every single torment possible yes. through burning. And you're going to be there forever and ever and ever. How many of you want to be tormented night and day? Not for 1,000 years, 2,000 years, but forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's what's happening to this rich man. That's happening to millions and billions of souls out there who rejected risen Savior, who rejected resurrection of Jesus Christ, who rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ, who rejected many chances they had to accept Jesus Christ. Look at verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. You know what people are going to look for in hell? They're looking for mercy or the lack thereof. There's no mercy in hell. Amen. God's providing all the mercy and grace right now, right now. through Jesus Christ. I mean, you've got to accept it right now if you're wise enough. Because if you wait too long, because you and I are one step away from death. Yes. Yes. We take one wrong step and fall, hit our head on the ground the wrong way, we die. Amen. We take one wrong step, you know, out on the street. Car could hit us and we die. Yes. We stay one wrong step and we get heart attack, we die. Right. We're very, very vulnerable beings. Yes. You and I are one step away from death. And if you reject this mercy through Jesus Christ, you'll never have mercy for eternity in hell. Right. Lack thereof. He's like, can you imagine this man burning and burning, crying out to Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and saying, Lazarus, why? Because he's so thirsty. He could feel it. He may dip the tip of his finger in water. That's how thirsty he is. Amen. It's only going to get worse. You know, when human beings get super thirsty, you know, they lose their mind. Right? Yeah. Because they're going to die. Right. But this guy can't even die. This person can't even die. You're going through the most excruciating pain of, you know, human being could, you know, go through thirst, and there's no hope. You'd rather die, but you can't die. I mean, I'm sure there's cussing everywhere in hell. Kill me right now. Kill me right now. Right. You know, Lord Jesus Christ, kill me right now. I'm sorry I rejected you, but kill me right now. I've been suffering for, you know, the last 500 years. Kill me, right? I've been suffering for the last 1,000 years, 2,000 years. I've been suffering for the last 25,000 years. Kill me right now. But Lord's answer is simple. You rejected me. Any other question? Amen. I mean, you rejected me. I mean, heaven, you're like, Lord, why do I deserve all this blessing? Yeah. You know, I have my own mansions, streets of pure gold, Right? Everything, Lord, what did I do to deserve all this? Because you accepted me. Thank Simple you. as that. You accept him, you have eternity in heaven. You reject him, you have eternal torment in hell without any mercy. When are we feel so thankful? Yeah. When we receive mercy from anybody, Amen. right? 
Say you and I committed a crime, and we need to spend 10 years in prison. Yeah. But the judge goes, you don't have to. Thank you. Man, thank you for your mercy. Yes. If you have children, your children breaks the glass, you know, playing with their baseball when they're not supposed to. And your daddy and mommy goes, you know what? It's OK. We all make mistakes. You know how happy your children are? Yeah. Because you and I have gone through the same thing. When you deserve to be punished, but you didn't get punished. Yes. Because, you know, your parents showed you some mercy. But when the Lord's trying to show you mercy for our eternity, if you reject it, there's no more. Get saved. No more. Amen. And again, there are no guarantees. For thou knows not what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Yes. You can. For life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Amen. Yes. You know? It just vanishes away. And then before you know it, if you do not trust Jesus Christ like the rich man, I mean, I mean, if you don't get saved like the rich man, and if you don't trust Christ like many of the souls out there, then what's going to happen? You're just going to wake up in hell. I think that's, you know, maybe some people have nightmares, you know, people who constantly reject Jesus Christ. But imagine if that's real. You're, you're asking everybody, is that a dream? Someone wake me up. Someone wake me up. Someone wake me up. But you can't. I mean, you're literally burning. And you're like, ah, first day, first hour. Oh, man, I hope this dream, man, this is the worst dream ever. I hope it ends. Man, it goes two hours, five hours, eight hours. Oh, man. And now you start remembering everything. You know, in hell, you're going to remember every person who tried to witness to you. Every single person. You gotta remember all the preachings that you've heard. Think about it. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. It's gonna go through it. Yeah. You're gonna remember that preacher, you're gonna remember your family members, you're gonna remember your friends, you're gonna remember, you know, anybody out on the street who's giving you the gospel, and then your attitude and your mind was. You just reject it. Right. How many times do you think that's going to go through a human being's mind that's in hell? Yeah. They're, they're going to think about it every second. Amen. Only if I wasn't foolish, only if I wasn't stubborn, only if I trusted Christ at that one moment. Because do you have to do anything to receive this free gift of salvation? No. Yes, sir. No. It's just your mind. It's free gift. You just have to accept it. But if you reject it, some people say it's too easy. Why would God die for you if he didn't want to make it easy? Right? Why would someone die for you if they don't want to make it easier on you? Right? He died for us so that we could receive this simple salvation, this gift of eternal life. And you're going to remember all the witnesses, and also you're going to remember your family members. Man, that's sad. In hell, you're not only being tormented, but you're going to remember, just like rich man, all the family members who rejects Christ and who's on their way to hell. I mean, if you're saved, you think about it. Can you imagine any of your family members burning in hell for eternity? Can you imagine any of your best friends burning in hell for eternity? Can you imagine any person that you know burning in hell for eternity, you're going to remember. I mean, people in hell are going to remember forever. And can you imagine if they see that person actually come to hell, burn with them for all eternity? Man, I mean, there's probably someone that you know who's on their way to hell. Yes. As a safe Christian, what are you doing? I mean... You say, I love the lost souls. Don't say it only. Do something about it. Yeah. You know, witness them. Talk to them. Yes. Write a letter to them if they don't want to talk to you anymore. You know, you got to do something. Send a message. Nowadays, it's not like in the old days where you have to talk to a person through a phone if they're far away. You could actually text them, yes. right? And then you could hide behind your phone if you're scared. <laughs> right? You don't have to hear that live voice, right? You could actually do it. But as a Bible-believing so-called Christians, how come you don't have burden for the loss out there? 
I mean, that's completely shame on you and shame on me. Yes. I mean, we, we are full of shamefulness. Amen. But if we don't preach the gospel, we don't tell people about resurrected Christ, we are guilty of growing hell more and more. Yes. After you've gotten saved, you and I have no excuse. You and I have to witness to every single person. Not because we have to, because we love their souls. Would you want to see, just imagine somebody, and would you want to see that person in eternal torment forever and ever? I mean, you could close your eyes for five seconds, and you see him, you know, your imagery of, you know, burn, someone burning there forever and ever, looking for help, asking for help, but they can't, and you can't do anything about it at that point. How are you going to feel? I mean, that's why at that judgment, there's tears have to be wiped away by the Lord. You know, from the saints, save people for the job you and I have not done. Because we're not going to be, you know, not guilty of those things. Then, as you see in this case of rich man, eternal torment, no mercy. Always reminiscing about people witness to him. Thinking about those lost family. If you're lost today, it is your chance. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. Bible says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood, so that all your sins can be washed away once and for all. All you have to do is with repenting heart, turning from your ways, and receive Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Bible says, but as many as received him, who? Jesus Christ, to them gave you power to become the sons of God even to that that believe on his name. It's so simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. If you don't know where you're going tonight, if you don't even remember that time when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the time. Now is the day of salvation. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord Jesus Christ died for you and me, and he rose from the dead so that you and I can have eternal life. If you don't know where you're going tonight, and if you have never accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, knowing that you are sin on your way to hell, believing that Jesus Christ shed his precious blood and died for your sins and rose from the dead, and received him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, in this prayer, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart and receive Christ in your eyes, your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 13 says what? But as many, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. You could know if you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because verse 12 says, he that hath the Son has life. He that hath not the Son of God has not life. You never have to worry about burning in hell because you trusted reason Savior. And as a saved person, yeah who will be resurrected one day just like the Lord, yeah. you and I have to have a burden for lost souls out yes, there. Sir. You and I can't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus no, Christ. Sir. You and I have to be bold for Jesus Christ. You and I have to be bold for God. So Jesus Christ, you and I have to talk to every single creature out there because that's Lord's command. And you can't do it alone. You have to trust the strength of Lord Jesus Christ. And you got to rely on the Holy Ghost to speak yes. through you. And you got to make sure that you never lose that zeal Amen. for lost souls out there. Let's pray. Dear Father, we need to remember more about resurrected Savior and Lord. We just lackadaisically go each day just doing our things and forget about what it means, the importance of resurrection of Jesus Christ. It gives us eternal life. It's different from any other religion in the world. And we need to 
reach out because there's so many people like rich men out there just burning forever in hell. If we have any family members, acquaintance, friends who's on their way to hell, we're going to just watch and just see them die and burn in hell. Lord God, help us to have that zeal and love for the lost souls out there. Help us to have this burden for all the lost in the world, Lord. Because you loved us so much and you died for us. That's the least that we can do for the lost out there, Lord. I pray that you bless the rest of the service today. And I pray that you bless the fellowship. And I pray that you come soon, Lord. You come soon, Lord. Give us so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.